and the person rising is Carl Malamud with PeopleResource.org, coming to the podium. Thank you. I'm from California. I don't believe in PowerPoint, but I do want a soapbox. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank David Ferriero for allowing us to occupy NARA today. Uh, Maura Marks and uh, John Palfrey, of course, for working for the last year to make this real. And especially to uh, Bob Darton, who's been our prophet here, to uh, leading us to the promised land of the Republic of Letters. Uh, bless me, Professor, for I have scanned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I think about a digital public library of America, I keep seeing images of reservoirs and bridges. When I think of the DPLA, I think of the Hoover Dam and the Golden Gate Bridge. If you look at our museums and you look at our archives and our research institutions, there's a tremendous reservoir of knowledge that's locked up waiting to be tapped. It's tempting to think that our world of knowledge, born digital, that we're flooded with information, that we need what Clay Johnson calls an information diet. We don't need more data. But our internet is only flooded with some kinds of information right now, and some of our most important pools of knowledge are not available to all, or available only to those with gold credit cards or positions of privilege in our elite institutions. Knowledge in our world does belong to the 1%. And I can give you two examples, and I think you can probably think of many more. The first is law and government. The law our court opinions, our statutes, our regulations, our public safety codes. It's the operating system of our society. It's the rules that make our democracy work. It's the code that makes America such a special place. But private fences have enclosed this most public of public domains. Access to justice has become all about access to money. Let me give you one other example. If you're a creative worker, if you're a writer, a filmmaker, if you're an artist, a scholar, you draw on imagery that has accumulated over thousands of years. Imagery you use to create new works of art and scholarship. Creative workers must stand on the shoulders of giants if they're to reach new heights. But as any Hollywood filmmaker will tell you, much of that imagery is locked up in for-profit collections like Getty Images or Corbis or other operations that have taken public domain materials and they've built walls and gates around them. Even our museums, even our National Smithsonian Institution have locked up their vaults, allowing the images to be used only by those who stop by a cash register first. There's a tremendous reservoir of this untapped knowledge in America. Knowledge is our country's most important renewable natural resource. It's a common pool that should be available to all. We already have many beautiful museums. We have bottomless libraries. We have unique research institutions. What if the DPLA, instead of simply creating yet another institution, created a common reservoir that we could all tap into? What if the Hathi Trust put everything they have into a common pool, a pool that they, in turn, could draw upon to create an even more impressive Hathi Trust? What if the Internet Archive and the Library of Congress and public libraries and individuals and local historical societies could all draw on those deep wells and all contribute to that common pool? It's tempting for any one institution to say, I have the answer. But what if we shift the debate so that it becomes we all have the answer. Here's my contributions. See what you can do with it. Surprise me. I have one more metaphor, and then I'm going to stop beating this metaphorical horse, as it were. That metaphor is a bridge. And the specific bridge I think of is a Washington bridge, a bridge that connects our nation's capital to the rest of the country. When it comes to untapped resources, Washington is the deepest well. It's a vast storehouse locked inside this beltway. Look at our national cultural institutions, our Library of Congress, the National Library of Medicine, the Smithsonian Institution, the National Agricultural Library, the National Technical Information Service, the Government Printing Office, the National Archives, the list goes on. While we have glimpsed a few shining examples of that potential, the American Memory Project from the Library of Congress, the pioneering National Library of Medicine, 
for the most part, those resources lay hidden. Our opportunity is to build a bridge to Washington, and that means we need to get much more serious about public works projects for knowledge. We need to start a national digitization initiative that is more than pilots and prototypes. We need a decade-long commitment to scanning. We need our federal government to understand that it's time to deploy the Internet Corps of Engineers to scan at stale, to become a much more serious contributor to that reservoir of knowledge, to be at the center of that public park that makes access to knowledge a right for all Americans, not a privilege for the 1%. If a self-appointed librarian in an abandoned church like Rooster Kale can publish three million books, how can our federal government not do more? If Google can scan 10 million books just to feed its search engine, why can't the federal government do the same to transform our nation's educational system? If Westlaw can scan the opinions of our courts and statutes of our legislatures to maximize shareholder value, why can't the Judicial Conference of the United States and our nation's law schools work together to maximize democratic values? If we can put a man on the moon, why can't we launch the Library of Congress into cyberspace? If we spend billions of dollars to buy access to politicians, why can't we spend billions of dollars to buy access to knowledge and justice to promote the useful arts, commerce, and science? That, I think, is the challenge that we face. And these are the kinds of bridges and reservoirs we can build, the kinds of public projects that can become the foundation of the Digital Public Library of America. It's the opportunity we can realize, but only if we work together. Thank you. Thank you.